Good day YouTube. Today we're talking about nozzle sizes and layer heights and some of the myths that can be associated amongst these. The file I'll be testing is uh, the low poly version of Bulbasaur, uh, Bulbasaur Starter First Gen by Flow Elastic on Thingiverse. When I threw it into Cura I noticed that it would have an error message uh, if the layer height was more than 80% of the nozzle size. For a bit more control, I thought I'd open the uh, file through Slicer instead. And in this case, I was given an even better error because I couldn't slice the file at all if the layer height is greater than nozzle diameter. The way around this can only be done really in Slicer. Increase your nozzle size and decrease your extrusion widths. And then you'll generate a path that is printable anyway. So the thing to keep in mind is that the nozzle size really doesn't affect the way that the slicer operates in most cases. Uh, so slicer allows you to change your extrusion width independently of your nozzle size. And the extrusion width with the combination of the layer height is almost all of, that you need to actually calculate uh, your total fill size. So today I'd like to share with you some of the results I've found during my testing. So here we are printing at 0.6 millimeter thick layers uh, with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle that I confirmed with some tiny drill bits, tried to push them into the nozzle and uh, confirm the size that way. What we're actually relying on mostly here is a phenomenon called die swell. So as the plastic gets heated and extruded through a small nozzle, there's a degree of spring back and so the material that comes out of the nozzle is actually slightly thicker than the nozzle size itself. So this is increased by extruding at a lower temperature and hence there's more residual stress in the material as it's coming through the nozzle and you get more spring back. So I was able to get about 0.65 thick uh, strands coming out of my extruder measured with a vernier just um, with free air printing and so that's where I started. As you can see the print comes along pretty well. Uh, there's a few little delaminations but nothing really that probably couldn't be fixed by potentially just increasing the flow rate slightly or moving a little bit more slowly. So here's the final result. Uh, as you can see like I mentioned it comes out pretty good actually quite like the wood filament for this application. It makes it really look like cardboard layers that have been stuck together and I think it really helps with the low poly model of the Bulbasaur to have it printed in this really coarse nature. But of course here at Brainy Deep we're not content on just getting things to work. We really want to push them to extremes. And so my next attempt was to print Bulbasaur with a one millimeter thick layer height greater than the die swell of the nozzle. So here what we're mostly relying on the fact is that the plastic stays molten and as long as it has something underneath it, it will s spread out much like cookie dough. And you can see it's got some interesting uh, surface textures there where you've got overhangs as the material drops down below that. And it really comes out looking really cool. I quite like him. Uh, he looks a bit like a hessian sack or knitted material. I think the happiest thing uh, that I can say with the thick layer heights is you know, it seems to have a, a tiny impact on uh, the stringing between the head and the rear of the model. But other than that, it actually closed up quite nicely. Uh, the overhangs printed pretty well. And unfortunately for poor Ash, Nurse Joy probably can't heal the worms that are inside of him. So this infill could probably be fixed by changing the slicer infill to lines rather than rectilinear. And so here we see the whole happy Bulbasaur family. The print on the left was one I did off camera. It was uh, 0.2 mil layer heights where I was trying uh, just testing the material for the first time. And then across you see the 0.6 and the 1 mil. So hopefully uh, we've all learnt something today that layer heights uh, are thicker than your nozzle diameter are actually not impossible at all and it is quite possible to get a decent outcome with one of these. And in fact, 
a result which is in some cases quite preferential. So anyway, so long for now.